Welcome to the footy up for round four. Welcome to you, Paul, for a round that you've already described as the best yet of uh, 2008. Oh, it's the most exciting round I've seen in 150 years. <laughs> really? Oh, it's a great round to be in the middle of marvellous Melbourne there on the skyline behind us. I'm sounding a little bit like Mike Larkin. I think you're doing Stephen Jacobs postcards from the edge or whatever it's called. <laughs> you have just combined a Channel 9 television <laughs> show with um, a movie starring Shirley MacLaine and written by Princess Leia. <laughs> On the weekend, Barry Hall combined a football match with a horror movie. Oh. And, uh, with a punching... Let's have a look at the footage. It, it tells yeah. the story really here. And the, the victim on this occasion was Brent Staker. Mm. And that is one of the biggest punches to the face I've ever seen. Yeah. That Not just, just in football, but just in life yeah. in general. I've never been punched... Well, actually, once I was punched in the face playing basketball. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it intentionally? or was yeah, someone... oh, yeah, it was. So someone actually clocked you one. Yeah, and I'm not sure whether this is relevant for Barry Hall's tribunal hearing, but that guy got four weeks. Uh, four weeks <laughs> of what? Of suspension. Oh, for the... Oh, right. Okay. So if Barry oh, gets no. off with four, I think he'd be happy. W was there like a, an official tribunal system? Yeah, yeah. I had to take a witness and he took a witness. R who did you take? I took my friend Dougal. He really? said that he'd punched me in the face, and he took his friend who said that he'd punched him in the face. Oh. And they said, given the fact that he was so honest about it, they were, gave him a lenient sentence. Oh, wow. Do you think Barry will get off with four? Oh, no, no, not at all. I think Barry might be getting a little bit more than four. <laughs> Would you care to speculate how many? I thought we were stopping there. I thought that was the end of the segment. No, no, I want you to oh, speculate. Oh, really? Oh, I okay. want you to riff on that. I'll riff on it. <laughs> um, I'd go for six to eight. Paul, Brisbane have staged the biggest comeback I can remember in recent times. Yeah. What, what was the situation halfway through the third quarter there? They, they seemed like they were about... Port Adelaide were beating Brisbane by 47 points at the 22 minute of the third quarter. And then the heavens opened. Yeah, yeah. So it's raining. They're goals. Eight goals down. And they've, they're, not only they won, they won by 20 points. Yes. How did that happen? Brisbane put on nine goals, six in the last quarter of the game in the pouring rain unbelievable it was it was natural disaster type conditions <laughs> really and no oh, choco wasn't happy was it, oh. was it only a bit of drizzle though it wasn't natural disaster oh no it was it, it was, was it flooding. declared a natural disaster oh yeah that's why kevin rudd <laughs> came home early <laughs> Choco described it as the most disappointing loss he's ever been involved with at the club. Mm -hmm. because, well, hang on, Choco. Cast your mind back six months ago when your team was flogged on grand final day. I would have felt that might have been a little bit disappointing for you and the Corns brothers. <laughs> but as a rule of thumb, what do you think is the most, the biggest margin that can be overhauled in the last quarter? Look, I've always when thought you're watching a team. if your team's getting beaten by five or six goals, you're pretty yeah. much done for. Yeah, I reckon six goals is the absolute outside, amazing come from behind yeah. win. Mm-hmm. But they put on nine goals, six. <laughs> to one goal, one. Uh, unbelievable. Something just touched the back that of my leg. Knee. You're coming it, it from was behind. A knee. It was a knee. It was a knee. <laughs> Definitely a knee. This happened in the first quarter. Not really related to the last quarter comeback. But um, have a look at this. Where well, the ball hits the goal umpire and it's given a goal. Yeah. Um, was that the right decision? Look, what it was the right there? decision by what? the rule book. I mean, the rule book says that if the ball hits the umpire, then it's play on. So the umpire. So if it hits the umpire and goes back into play yeah. without crossing the yes, line. That's right. So that's so what happened. And it, then it, it bounced hit the over ground the line. and it went out. It's a goal. But common sense would say that the umpire should have just said it was a point because his, his nads were between. <laughs> The ball I think it did get him in the nads, actually. Did, do you notice? <laughs> well, can we replay you know that what? again? You watch yeah. this. Faith does not change. <laughs> Balls of steel. But I'll tell you, but no, but they're the worst ones because you don't realise for another 10 seconds until the pain sets in. When? You how know, often do you get whacked No, you know there? when something just brushes it and you don't know straight away? I reckon... Hey, if there's anything brushing me down there, I know straight away <laughs> because I tell you what, it's a long time between drinks. trying to burp but I can't <laughs> I, used to, I used to be in front of you when we did this yeah I know you used to be over on my left every shoulder every week I'm a little bit you closer forward. Oh. you want to host or something yeah, I've always felt that I was the well, host well why don't you introduce a segment then okay um, alright there was a few important meetings that happened at AF Hell House this week uh, one of which was Andrew Demetrio's opportunity to discuss the two new teams coming oh, this into the this is league. a riveting topic <laughs> we already knew this that there's going to be two new teams there's no, yeah but there's I'm no excited by there. this all right. Because, I mean, they started to talk about these two new teams making, maybe, you know, taking players early in drafts. That and, seems to and, be the main yeah. thing that clubs are worried about, that they're yeah. going to get their eyes picked out of their team. And you're concerned that, you know, a player may be drafted to, say, I don't know, uh, the Gold Coast team next year and not actually get to play for two years. That's Well, I think, yeah, I think that they get 
two years in advance they get drafts concessions. Yeah. But that's all right because they'll just get but to play like in the VFA or the, or the quaffle no, or but, something. But these guys could be playing AFL footy. But they can play in the quaffle. Why would you want to get drafted there and you don't get to play for a year? What quaffle? What's a quaffle? You know, the quaffle. Is that, the... What, is that the bloody little marsupial from... You're thinking of a quokka. A quokka, right. <laughs> yeah, this quokkas have got nothing to do with Queensland anyway. Really Although not. that'd be a bloody good name for one of those new teams, the Quokkas. Well, the, <laughs> <would it>? the <laughs> Sydney West Quokkas. Are Quokkas menacing? Oh, definitely. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Azaria Chamberlain, the only that's thing all I'm than, saying. It's the only thing scarier than Brett Hitty's theme park. That's right. That's, the a, that's on Rottnest Island as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're going to have to think of some names for these teams, though. Yeah. They're going to have a West Sydney team and they're going to have a, a Queensland or Gold Coast team. Yeah. Well, what 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 Australian animals are left? I mean, we've. I don't think I don't think you do animals anymore. No. I think I think you go for something more abstract. What like the the Gold Coast feeling? Yeah, the feeling. That'd be good. But you get a bit of a feeling when you're up there on the Gold Coast. Well, I tell you, what I did. I was down at the Cross. I stayed at the YMCA, the Young Man's Christians Association. Really? Yeah. The, the Cross isn't the Cross. I got up. King's Cross in yeah, Sydney. Yeah. That's not the Gold Coast. No, I'm talking about West Sydney. Is oh right. West Sydney? Oh okay. So. <laughs> So hang on. I think we may have gone off track. I said that we should call them the Gold Coast feeling, which in turn reminded you of a feeling that you got when you stayed in Sydney one time, that you have felt the need to share. (laughs) Anything goes. Have a look at this, Paul. Check this out. Oh, special effects. Yep. How do you like that? I love it. Do you know why? Why? Where was it? We're in inverse world. Why are we in inverse because, world? <laughs> because, um, because Carlton and Richmond both won this weekend. Oh. Carlton won their first game in 310 days. Yes. Imagine being a Carlton supporter right You'd now. You'd be ecstatic. You'd remember what it felt like. Is it just me or does it look like we're on an episode of Doctor Who from 1982? <laughs> exterminate, exterminate. And, then, <laughs> and Richmond went over and scaled the mountain against oh, Fremantle. What a great job. They played They uh, played really well. Matthew Richardson played on a wing. He got about 25 touches, 15 marks and kicked four goals. He's one of the best contested marks in the competition. Most he definitely. Might be when he is on song, he is better than anyone. And you were at the G yes. watching Collingwood Carlton. Yeah. Were Carlton that good? Look, I think Collingwood were, were bad. I think it was more of a Collingwood loss than a Carlton win. Oh, well, give them, give them oh, their yes. moment. Look, um, give them their moment. Of, yes, Cruiser does central. look like he's going to be a good player. And Favola player. was amazing. Favola. He's going to kick 100 goals oh, this year. Most definitely. He, he is brilliant. I can't wait until um, Geelong take on Carlton, and I want to see the favola Scarlet matchup. Yeah. I reckon that'll be a really exciting one this year. Could be good, yeah. Yep. And, of course, uh, Mark Harvey wasn't too impressed by the way Frio performed there playing Richmond he wasn't and, and as we look ahead to this weekend it'll be interesting to see what he does because I reckon he's from the old school yeah the old school of disciplinarian coaching give a player a whack can with we a, turn this off now or a bag we... of oranges yeah a whack right. what give him a whack with a bag of oranges oh right just so they don't bruise the oranges or the player either of them you can eat the oranges and you can get away with hitting someone <laughs> Log on to uh, afl.thepodcastnetwork.com to check out what Barry Hall gets tonight. Should be very interesting. What, yep. What's the what's some of the biggest penalties you can remember in recent times? I think Phil Carmen got a massive penalty, and then you told me earlier about those Carlton players from 1910. They got 99 matches for match fixing. Ooh. But the, one of the ones I remember was Diesel Williams when he got nine weeks for pushing the umpire away. That's right. Yeah. And you'd think it seems. Like it should get a heftier penalty than that. I, I would, I would think that uh, the the tribunal should throw the book at Barry. Oh, well, I mean, don't go too hard on him. I mean, you don't know the ins and outs of the case, so it'll be interesting to see what comes up tonight. Well, hang on, he hit a guy. Well, you don't know if he's provoked though. Provoked? What Saker could? Might have uh, said, what you verbally he's, provoked? He's, Barry's been on his best behaviour for you know a number of years now at Sydney. He hasn't put a foot wrong. Uh, and he snapped. Sportsmen so. are better than that. You can't say, you couldn't say anything to me. Like, your words couldn't provoke me into or violence or, or getting like upset. No, look, if, if you pushed me physically, maybe that yeah, would yeah, annoy yeah. me. But, just but, but words, wouldn't push sticks you over and the edge? stones, no way. No? Water off a duck's back? Of course. Did you throw your red socks in with that white t shirt? Is that why it's a nice pale pink colour? You are or? an asshole. <laughs> Do Dimmy still have any of those hoodies? 